Welcome back to the Daniel Scott Design video series and uh, today we're going to be going over hyperlapse video. Hyperlapse is different from typical time lapse video in the sense that we're going to be covering a long range of distance as opposed to uh, some of the motion time lapses you see with other videos. They, they're using a, 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 often a short dolly uh, that uses an intervalometer to take photos every uh, number of sequences. And so what we're going to be doing today is using a monopod or in this case we're going to be using a tripod. A monopod allows us to very quickly focus in on the focal point, and whereas a tripod will have to kind of fidget with it and adjust the level and everything, and then all our leveling is going to be done in post, so this is much quicker to use a monopod. Now my focal point is going to be on the uh, one of the windows, so I'm going to go ahead and take a shot. Now you want to be consistent with how far apart that the exposures are taken. Um, typically I take mine every five to eight seconds and then move my tripod every six inches and that way when it comes out in post you're not going to see a whole lot of jitters. All right, so after getting back from the Hyatt Regency from the photos we shot for the hyperlapse, we have 42 images and that equates to a little over a second um, at 24 frames per second. So. Um, I'm going to spare you the boring process of editing this hyperlapse in post. Instead, we'll use another example. Um, one of the reasons was it just didn't turn out that great. It was nothing that I could have done better to make a better hyperlapse. It was just a poor choice of subject. This is just a static building um, with not a whole lot of movement. There's whole, not a whole lot of time for the hyperlapse to show it a lot of clouds moving. There's no planes overhead. Uh, there's nobody jumping off the roof, so um, it's kind of a mix for a boring subject. So let me just go ahead and play it back for you. And that's all we have. Uh, and it's just, um, it's not something that I think that you would be interested in seeing me edit uh, for hyperlapse process. So instead, we'll, we'll choose one that turned out better. And then one of the ones I'm going to look at is um, the Walking Down Douglas, downtown Wichita. And this was a whole city block that I walked down. It probably took me about 25 minutes to shoot the whole thing. Each one of these squares on the sidewalk, I had used each one of those, so it's probably about 12 inches. So I moved my tripod every 12 inches, took a shot. My focal point was on one of these street lights down here, and it's just a straight line perspective going forward. Instead of some of the other ones that I've done where I'm going from right to left or vice versa, it's a little bit more difficult for the software to render a smooth hyperlapse because that there's so much stuff going on besides the focal point that it needs to calculate for. So that's the reason why this one's going to be a little bit more jittery than the others. Okay, and so let's take a look at a different one. So this is one that I took a week ago. This is uh, me standing on a bridge over the street of Douglas in Wichita, Kansas. This is actually one of the most stable um, videos that I've took so far. And I think that one of the reasons is because that as I was on the bridge taking photos, there was a ledge that provided a straight line for me to kind of go across. And uh, since I'm moving from right to left, I'm just kind of doing a, a kind of a, a horizontal panning of, uh, of a hyperlapse as opposed to kind of going down towards the focal plane and it's a lot easier for software to um, to stabilize and find uh, the balance uh, find that uh, that horizontal plane if you're just kind of moving on a horizontal axis if I'd have had my exposure set to maybe a, a fourth of a second as opposed to the 50th of a second that I was shooting on I could have got some of that motion blur with the cars uh, showing the, the the trailing lights with their headlights and their brake lights. So um, I think it looked great, but uh, that's something that could have been done better. What do you think? All right, so I'm going to show you my process for editing hyperlapse with this particular sequence. This is the one where we're walking down a street towards the focal plane um, on the street of Douglas in Wichita, Kansas. And so um, we're going to edit photos in Lightroom. We're going to import them into DaVinci Resolve and then export them from DaVinci Resolve. Uh, you might be asking, why don't I edit it using uh, Premiere? From my understanding, and I might be wrong, please comment below if you have a better process using Adobe products, but um, you have to import them into Photoshop 
which creates the animation, and then you have to render it through uh, Adobe Premiere. Okay, so after we've imported all of our images, you'll notice that towards the beginning of our shot, um, we have a lot of lighter exposed images because the sun was going down, and then later on the sun finally goes down all the way, and it's, it's a really dark image here. And so what I found that works for this shot um, is that if we take a photo in the middle of all these exposures, we might find a good balance uh, for this sequence. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the develop tools. I'm going to uh, increase the exposure just a little bit. I'm going to warm it up. And then um, I'm going to increase the clarity a little bit. And then I'm going to go to my histogram. And okay. and darken the highlights. That's going to give us a, a well-rounded exposure for, for all these. And then next I'm going to uh, increase my saturation just a little bit. And then after I've, I'm happy with all this, I'm going to go to my develop settings, go to copy settings, copy. I'm going to select all of these and then paste settings. And let's go ahead and check the last frame here. Okay, looks pretty good. Let's look at the first frames. Uh, it's a little bit overexposed, but I think I'm happy with that because if we make it any darker, the last frames are going to really, really be dark. Okay, so next we'll want to export these. And it's really important to uh, choose custom name sequence. And you can title this uh, whatever you want, um, but the sequencing, at, it adds a sequence number at the end. And so we'll have um, this name and then followed by one, two, three, or four. And then so then as we import the, these photos into DaVinci Resolve, it will know the order of the photos to create the time lapse with. And um, as far as the resolution, I'm actually going to uh, choose a 25. This is probably a, like a, a 500 pixel width uh, photo, but I'm going to downscale it to 2500 uh, pixels at a resolution of 22 because it's easier for the software to render that file. Um, and also it leaves us plenty of room to downscale to 20, uh, 1080p. And so we'll just go ahead and hit the export button. I've already done this, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel it out here. And then um, next, let's jump into um, DaVinci Resolve. If you don't already have DaVinci Resolve, please install it. It's free uh, for the basic license. And if you choose to upgrade to the studio license, you have a lot of other tools, just collaboration and um, smoothing and a lot of other cool things. For what we're doing here for Hyperlapse, this, is, this will do just fine. OK, so let's go ahead and create a new project. I'm going to click the media button and then I'm going to go to where my images are stored and it just shows up as kind of like a sequence here and we will put this clip into our media pool and then we're going to click the edit button down here and then we're going to bring the sequence into our timeline and then we'll move it over and then the first thing we're going to do is click on color and then this tab right here where it says window, we're going to drop this down to stabilizer. And then we want it to stabilize. Right now, I, I played with all these settings here um, with uh, perspective, similarity, and translation. And for this particular hyperlapse where I'm walking towards a focal plane where there's a lot of different uh, leading lines leading into that focal plane, um, it works the best out of all the other algorithms. Um, I've set the cropping ratio um, to 0 0.50, smooth 0 0.25, and I have zoom checked. And um, this works really well. Um, and so the next step is to zoom in because I want all this video 
um, goodness to fill the full frame. So I'm going to click on uh, this button right here, sizing, and then I'm going to zoom it until those black bars disappear. All right, next I'm going to click on deliver, and then I'm going to add the render to the queue. Let's see, testing. I click save. I'm going to start the render. It doesn't take very long. And then let's go ahead and check it out. All right, well, I'm super excited to share this tutorial on Hyperlapse with you. Um, if you like this episode, please hit the like button down below, subscribe, share it with your friends, your family, and your mom. Um, I recently been inspired to make this Hyperlapse video from watching uh, a video that Matty Hapoya, who's a YouTube champion, uh, he had recently come out with his own and his own take on hyperlapse and he kind of shows you uh, all these little cool gadgets that you can use to make hyperlapse so if you haven't seen that video um, check his out it's a really cool dude um, also subscribe like to my channel um, i have 32 subscribers so far which is awesome and i'm looking forward to the when i hit the 100 mark and the 1000 mark so i'm always looking uh, forward to improving also let me know in the comments below what i can do to improve this channel um, I'm open to criticism and uh, it helps me as a content creator make better content. So, um, and that concludes this episode. And thank you very much, and I will see you next week.